saints. I felt heavy on my soul the last couple of days about today's people and on the internet, our inability to empathize and to see actual people that we're speaking to. And even in person, uh, live stream face to face, we've forgotten how to give just human like respect and kindness to people we automatically look for it whatever it is that they differ from us on and attack them on it and I just find it's it's just not wise it's not I you know you can win a battle and lose the war or you can lose a battle and win a war and I feel that this is just a waste of time because as a believer Our goal is to be an ambassador for Christ. That is what our calling is. We represent Jesus on this earth. And I feel that is where we're lacking. Um, I myself have failed. Uh, I do do my best uh, to be aware of it when I do. So this isn't me attacking everybody. You're bad and I'm so good. That's not what I'm saying. There's wisdom in Solomon's Proverbs from a life lived in, in absolute power and luxury to find that it's all vanity without the Lord, without doing the Lord's will, without having purpose. That pleasure, can, can uh, you can get sick of it. And I, I said this about Hollywood. The reason I was so bankrupt and broken, it wasn't because I was striving against obstacles. I can handle that. I wasn't sick of pain. I wasn't sick of struggle. I was sick of pleasure. When the pleasure even disgusts you. It's like, yeah, 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 I got it. So what? That is when people have no hope. When the best case scenario still depresses you. Let that sink in a minute. Everyone thinks, I'll be happy when I get this, when I have... No, you won't. No, you won't. You will never be fulfilled unless the God that we were separated from lives back inside you. You will never feel right. And so, I encourage believers that are saved to remind them to believe what God says about them and him and their situation rather than believe the evidence they see out here. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. And that our feelings aren't anything other than our thoughts being wrong. Sometimes a feeling is reflective of our perception and not reflective of the truth. And I say this because I've been getting comments lately about how pointless what I do is. That if they, uh, you know, don't they know God? Can't they pray? Can't Okay, well, then everything is just pointless. Why is there pastors? Don't they have their own Bible? I believe that we are meant to work as a body. And that it gives not only us a sense of purpose and fellowship, but it's a gift to be able to watch someone grow and heal. And it's good to understand that people change their mind when they have enough of a relationship with a person that is trustworthy and consider the information. They weigh it out and they go, well, this person is saying this a lot and this xyz about this person and i think this person is trustworthy doesn't mean the person's right okay but this is why people change their mind now if we start just attacking people 
the minute we meet them, how will that relationship ever be built? I loved my friend Sam. And he teased me to death about my faith. He eventually, th- and Sister Shelley bore witness to this. She, she, she showered him with, with the love of God in Christ. And we had a long relationship. Over 20 some years. Maybe 30. Probably longer than that. But we didn't agree. But I loved him. And he loved me and he saved and he, he's passed on now. But I believe he's with the Lord. An a, a, a atheistic former Orthodox Jew turned atheist, turned New Age to turned whatever, I don't know what's going on, to being a believer late in his life. And it was because of a relationship. Uh, we teased each other and joked and called each other names, but it was in a funny way. It was like friendly because we had a relationship. But we can't build new relationships with people if we completely push them out, won't hear them out, and treat them ugly. And I'm seeing this constantly. We can't have a dialogue. Everybody's so either offensive or defensive. We can't just have civil discourse. This is, you know, we we live in America. This is what our country was founded on. People having the ability to speak their mind, to to put new and different ideas out there and weigh them out in the real world. And if we can't have discussions, it always turns to violence. When we can't have reason overtake things, reason and ethics, uh, morality dictate, nothing gets accomplished. It always turns to frustration and violence and hatred. And so... It's very upsetting to me and it worries me because I see this a lot on the internet. Now I'm seeing it even face to face. People just cannot tolerate somebody that doesn't agree with them. And it's all over this country and in the world. This has got to stop. We have, this is a trick of the enemy, I believe, to divide us in as many ways as possible. And it's why I have taken a look at myself these past few years. Because I was very rigid in what I thought. And now I'm able to give liberty or freedom for people to disagree and love them and genuinely do so. But I'm always afraid when I have to tell someone I don't see it that way because they take it personally and it hurts them. And I don't want to hurt anyone, but I can't say something that I don't think is true. So we have to let people speak what they believe is true. And if you don't, have a conversation and say this isn't personal with you let me let me try to understand you better what can you know why do you feel this way well, will you look at this please and consider it and I'll look at this just be more reasonable but there we're lacking the love people just kindness like decent human decency and empathy people people hurt the, the people are complex you know and I pulled up a couple of proverbs here because the one thing we can change is ourselves we can't control what other people do but we can control how we respond to it and if we can master that we can master anything the hardest thing to control is one's tongue but scripture tells us that one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control So when we lose that self-control, who's in charge? The dead man, the flesh. See, the ego of a dead guy can't get crushed. A dead person's ego doesn't need to be defended. And if I really reckon that that person died, people can bring up whatever they want about that person. That's, I don't know, who. that's not me. I'm a new creation in Christ. And that's what the enemy does. He brings up old things to try to condemn you. But God's not remembering those. He's not holding those against me. And neither is he holding them against you. So why are we holding them against ourselves? Let's move forward without all this baggage. And be who we're supposed to be in Christ. Grow into that. 
And I disagree with this fellow that's been sending messages about how pointless and if that and if this, because I know I was called to be an evangelist and to be a brother, be a sister to the brothers and sisters in Christ to encourage and edify and remind you what God's word says, not what we feel, but what he says and what he's done for us, because it's so easy. There's so many things coming against our faith that we sometimes need people to ensure it and remind us, right? Renew our minds daily. And so it is my honor to be able to be your sister in Christ and to remind you what God says about you and how much he loves you. And, and those uh, that have been forgiven much love much. And we're able to love people because we know how messed up we were and all the things we have been forgiven for. And so I will could keep doing what I do. And if it bothers people, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I don't agree with you. I'm sorry I can't be of service to you. I, I wish I could. I can't. I just don't work for you. It just doesn't work for you. And if you do need something, I'm happy to give you to a man of God that maybe thinks more along those lines or can do what you need. But I can only do what God's given me. And um, this is my little corner. And I want to keep doing that. So I want to share these Proverbs with you, okay? So many wonderful ones. But... If we want to get people to understand, now, we can't make anyone see or remove the veil from anyone or make them understand the gospel, but to be able to be heard is a good thing. So if you're shut down before you can even say anything, that's not good. And so I, I want to read this as uh, chapter 25, verse 15 in Proverbs. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded. And a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Now I want you to see this and put it together with the Proverbs in chapter 16, verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. It is more powerful and more difficult to control our own emotions and to treat people with patience and kindness in face of whatever than it is to roll over them with force. It makes a stronger impact. It changes lives. Love is the way. Jesus showed us the evil and so if we repay evil with more evil, we're creating evil. You've won the battle, lost the war. It looked like Jesus lost the battle, but he didn't. He allowed the battle to destroy itself through its own evil. He went willingly as a sheep to the slaughter. He let himself be mocked and he took on all of that shame and that heartache and that pain so he could rescue us and evil destroyed itself. Love conquers. It sounds like a bumper sticker, but it does. I don't care how dark something is, you can light a tiny match and see it far, far away. Darkness cannot overcome the light and we are light we were sometimes darkness but we are light let us remember who the Lord says we are in him today and remember that guy's dead you're a new creation in Christ let his spirit guide and dictate how you treat someone and Paul even tells us without love we're his clanging symbols you can say the most profound truths and no one's going to hear you because you're just noise. Love is what really changes people. It's massive. It's why we get teared up when we see the smallest, genuine, sincere acts of love. 
and we can sit there and listen to somebody scream at people, street preachers, for an hour and just get annoyed and roll or not hear anything he said. But a tiny, tiny act of kindness speaks so loud. I hope you guys are hearing me. It's, it's not to condemn. It's just how do we show up today? Let us control ourselves. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. All right, you guys. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Thank <laughs> you.